out of the blue, suddenly Taylor Swift's the most famous person on earth. <laughs> now she's at every NFL game with her boyfriend, who's backed by Bud Light and Pfizer. Yeah, because when she posted the link to the vote.org, it's like hundreds of thousands of young Taylor Swift fans all of a sudden registered to vote. I wonder who got to her from the White House or from wherever. Who makes that well, initial Jeff, handshake? Some people think this is a massive psyop. Major League Sports in and of itself is nothing but a psyop. Sure seems planned. Sure seems like something that is like concocted in order to accelerate the fame of these two people. Get them to the Super Bowl, the largest screens on earth. Get maybe a, get maybe like a proposal after the game. This is my, this is what I think is going to happen. There's going to be like some type of proposal at the after the Super Bowl is rigged for the Chiefs, and then the two of these people become it's like reach like crazy levels of absolute fame, and then they take all that fame that has been given to them by the rotted corporate press media entertainment industry that explicitly backs Democrats, and then they use that in order to try and save Joe Biden. Just imagine for a moment if people were as dedicated to Jesus as they are professional sports. Well, it turns out right-wingers have figured out Joe Biden's master plan to win re-election, and I think that this is foolproof. So let me walk you through it. Step number one, turn Taylor Swift into the world's biggest celebrity. Joe Biden did that. Check. She wasn't very popular before he became president, so he did that. Then he got her to date a specific football player. One who in particular has done ad campaigns with Bud Light and Pfizer. That's really important. And then once you've gotten her to do that, you then rig the NFL for him to increase the status of both of them to turn them into a power couple. And now we're at the point where the stage is set. So all that's left is to rig the Super Bowl for her boyfriend so that way the camera can see him drop down on one knee after his huge victory and propose to her in a magical moment and after she says yes he then puts the ring on her finger and then the camera zooms in and you see biden 2024 engraved on the ring and then the crowd goes wild they start chanting biden biden and the entire country is captivated by that magical moment including donald trump who then sees that and drops out of the presidential race immediately and endorses joe biden after getting caught up in the moment just like all of us that is exactly how it's going to play out and the conservative geniuses who crack the code see biden's plan coming to fruition before our very eyes so tori auden of the new republic explains the chiefs defeated the baltimore ravens sunday night and will go on to defend their super bowl champions title much of the buzz around the recent chiefs games though is due to the presence of music superstar swift who is dating the chiefs tight end travis kels the far right is convinced that the super bowl will be rigged in favor of the kansas city chiefs so that taylor swift can get more attention attention before she endorses another competition rigger, President Joe Biden. <laughs> I just think it's so funny that like, as Biden's brain is melting out of his ears, they think that he's able to pull off this massive conspiracy theory, but they unironically believe that. They think on one hand, well, you know, he very clearly isn't mentally competent, but on the other hand, He's competent enough to do all of this. It's, it's pretty crazy, isn't it? Now, let me show you what I mean by that. So in response to Pizzagate conspiracy theorist Jack Posobiec, failed presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy writes, quote, I wonder who's going to win the Super Bowl next month. And I wonder if there's a major presidential endorsement coming from an artificially culturally propped up couple this fall. Just some wild speculation over here. Let's see how it ages over the next eight months. And once he spoke it into the universe, a lot of other conservatives began to see it as well. And they've convinced themselves that uh, the Super Bowl isn't just being rigged, but it's specifically rigged because of Joe Biden. It's rigged at his behest, probably because of him. Tim Pool, for example, writes, how old were you when you learned the NFL was fake? Well, I was today years old, Tim. Jack Lombardi chimes in saying, I have never been more convinced 
that the Super Bowl is rigged with all the unneeded and unwanted Taylor coverage at the games. Casey's journey to the Super Bowl, totally scripted. Next, Travis and Taylor together at the Super Bowl appearing happy and in love. Then, Casey wins. And then, later announcing their support for Biden. <laughs> Coincidental? Nope. Bought and paid for a couple. Shakes my head. Bookmark this post. Oh, I will. I absolutely will. Joe Manorino chimed in with a viral tweet, also claiming that the NFL is rigged and that they made sure that Taylor Swift's boyfriend's team won and calls her a true problem for our country, which is a bit... Um, melodramatic, but nonetheless, Nick Sorter chimes in saying, I haven't given a crap about the NFL since all their Black Lives Matter BS, but now I'm a 49ers fan specifically to see Taylor Swift and that Pfizer guy go down and just the picture that they included of him <laughs> is so funny. Like him with the, the band-aid and the Pfizer logo. For some reason, that shit is so funny to me. But unfortunately for you, uh, it's rigged. So I guess that his team's victory is already predetermined. Sorry, I don't make the rules. But conservative flat earther Candace Owens also chimed in with a different take and reminded everyone how she accused Taylor Swift of being, quote, demonic, evil, and Luciferian, adding, of course, Satan wants to use her now to elect Joe back into the White House to destroy what's left of America. Well, of course, that's obvious, idiot. Now... <laughs> There's a couple of things that is fueling their hysteria over Taylor Swift. Obviously, she's one of the biggest stars in the world, and also she's a liberal with a significant amount of political influence. She was able to get tens of thousands of her fans to register to vote with a single Instagram post, and conservatives view that as a threat to their electoral ambitions. And they should. Now, second of all, there's this assumption that the media is fixated on her specifically because she's a liberal. So if you promote Taylor Swift, you're in effect promoting liberalism as well. So you kind of kill two birds with one stone, I guess. But on top of that, a recent New York Times article reports about how Biden aides view Taylor Swift as the endorsement of their wildest dreams, which has led to speculation among conservatives that there is a level of coordination between Taylor Swift and the White House. Now, in reality, I mean, America has always been obsessed with celebrities and who they date. And this is like, I remember this since I was a kid. So this is really nothing new. And politicians have always tried to court any and all celebrity endorsements that they get. Even if they don't know the celebrity, just knowing that somebody is famous is important to them because clearly they want votes. Case in point. One of the big superstars of the world, Little Pimp. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> How is it going? Do you want to come up and say something? Do you want to? Come on. A little pump. Come on. Come on up here. Come on up here. MAGA 2020. 20. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. And do not vote for Sleepy Joe at all. I mean, Trump was genuinely excited to win the coveted Lil Pump endorsement, or as he called him, Little Pimp, which is amazing. Uh, but I mean, he hasn't been relevant since 2017 when Gucci Gang came out. But Trump was like, oh, he was famous at least a couple of years ago. I want that endorsement too. come up on stage, even though none of the people here know about you or have ever heard about you. But I mean, politicians know the value of celebrity endorsements, particularly during election years. So I just feel like it's so absurd to think that there's like this conspiracy surrounding Biden trying to get the endorsement of Taylor Swift. Of course, he's trying to get her endorsement. But I mean, there were no claims of Lil Pump being a psyop from liberals when he endorsed Trump. So the question is, why is it suddenly suspicious when Biden tries to court a celebrity endorsement? And I think the answer is because Biden is somebody who they think is already a bad person who rigged the election. So, I mean, if he could rig the election, if he's savvy enough to do that, He's also savvy enough to coordinate this massive PSYOP campaign with the NFL for a Taylor Swift endorsement. And maybe, you know, if he rigs the Super Bowl for her, for her boyfriend in particular, then she'll be like, well, since you did this to me, Biden, I have to pay it forward and endorse you. So thank you for rigging it for my boyfriend who does ads for, for Pfizer. <laughs> the situation is just amazing to me. Now, the reality is, like Trump, Biden is also clueless about celebrities and I would guarantee you he's probably never heard of Taylor Swift. And I say this because when he tried to reference her 
in a line that was probably scripted by one of his aides, he literally confused her with Britney Spears. Now, just to get here, Liberty and Bell had to beat some tough odds in competition. They had to work hard to show patience and be willing to travel over a thousand miles. You could say even this harder than getting a, a ticket to the Renaissance tour or, or, or Britney's tour. She's down in, it's kind of warm in Brazil right now. So close, but yet so far. But that guy, according to conservatives, is surely going to rig the entire NFL for an endorsement that he doesn't even need because they think he's just going to rig the election anyway. You know, it's weird because if they actually believed Biden has as much power as they say he does, why even vote? Because it doesn't matter. He's just going to rig the election. And if he's going to rig the election, what's the point in rigging the NFL for an endorsement, right? They make so many logical leaps while not stopping to think, hmm, what's the motive here? Why do this if he's already doing that? But I mean, it's a conspiracy theory, so there's not much thought put into it. Only wild speculation and a little bit of delusion or a lot of delusion, I should say. But, you know, we've reached a stage in American politics where conservatives are so batshit crazy that Fox News has somehow become the voice of reason in a sense. Now, I say this because... Brian Kilmeade, of all people, I think one of the dumbest people on Fox News, he responded to Vivek Ramaswamy's idea that Biden rigged the NFL, and he shot it down. Okay, good for you, Brian Kilmeade. Now, he still had some choice words for Taylor Swift, but nonetheless, he shot down this stupid idea that the NFL has been rigged by Biden for Taylor Swift. Okay, number one, if there's going to be a fix at the Super Bowl, it'll be the biggest scandal in the history of the world. Yes. Uh, it's the biggest game the whole world watches now. Nobody told the 49ers because yeah. I'm pretty sure they play tackle football pretty well, too. So it's a yeah. crazy statement. Their special strategy is to get young people to vote, is to have the, her support him. Now, he, she evidently tweeted out support for him, and I saw the full screen this morning. I don't remember that. 2018, mm. she went for the candidate, uh, Phil Bredson, against Marsha Blackburn. Uh, Marsha Blackburn yeah. felt that. She does have power. But it would be the single dumbest thing a mega superstar could ever do. Why would you tell half the country that you don't agree with them in this highly polarized time? You stay out of it. Hey, listen, I'm Taylor Swift. I like this guy. He happens to play football for a living. I'm on the stage yep. a lot selling out. That's it. I think, I think it would be the craziest thing ever for her to do it. And Joe Biden's not worth it. I mean, my goodness. If you need Taylor yeah. Swift to get you another four years, that's how bad your first four <laughs> years have been. You're done. You're finished. You're through. So Brian Kilmeade threw cold water on this insane conspiracy theory, and I think that that's really important. Kudos to him for doing that. I mean, this conspiracy theory isn't as damaging to the country as, say, you know, a conspiracy about the election being stolen. But nonetheless, I think that the less we get people to think in delusional terms, the better off we all are as a country. But I mean, you can still acknowledge Taylor Swift's political influence and be against that because, you know, she hurt her team while not jumping to hysterical conclusions about her and this scheme between Biden and maybe she's working with the deep state. But I mean, Brian Kilmeade is wrong about one thing. He does say that it's a mistake for Taylor Swift to endorse Biden. And that makes sense in theory. Like usually you don't want to split your fans in half and, you know, let them know that you don't agree with them politically if she does have conservative fans, which I'm assuming that she does. But as Brian Tyler Cohen points out, she endorsed Biden in 2020 and then proceeded to host the highest grossing concert tour of all time. So she's one of these celebrities that's just too big to cancel. I mean, she's not the only one with that level of fame and power. Elon Musk chums it up with white supremacists on the regular, yet he still gets government handouts for his companies. So some people are just too big and too wealthy, and that makes them untouchable in a sense. And anything that they do, it doesn't really matter because they're, they're, they're too big to fail, for lack of a better word. But going back to Fox News being the voice of reason, Judge Jeanine Pirro, of all people, made a sound point, I can't believe I'm saying that, about the political limitations of Taylor Swift's political influence, and she kind of implied that maybe conservatives are being a bit hysterical about Taylor Swift without actually saying that. But nonetheless, let's watch. People are, Biden is assuming that if she gets involved in this election, and she did support Joe Biden in 2020, mm -hmm. so it's not unusual for her to get involved in politics, and you're right, with the Marsha Blackburn. Marsha Blackburn kicked that guy's butt. But again, that's Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, but but with the young vote, a new poll shows that 18 percent of voters are more likely to back a Taylor Swift endorsed candidate. But listen to this. 
17 percent are less likely to vote for someone she chooses. So they cancel each other out. Yeah. So don't get involved. Don't get involved in politics. We don't want to see you there. And but Joe Biden's in the hole with young people. He knows it. Mm -hmm. And if he thinks Taylor can get him out of that hole, he's going to go for it. I never thought that I would say this, but I agree with Judge Jeanine Pirro. What a world we're living in. You know, it's insulting to the intelligence of young people to assume that they care more about Taylor Swift's endorsement than, say, ending a genocide in Gaza. But she is right that Taylor Swift triggers both positive and negative partisan responses. However, what Pirro doesn't acknowledge is the negative partisanship she triggers can be offset by her registering new voters, which she is more than capable of doing and has demonstrated that she has been able to do. Now, that right there is why conservatives hate Taylor Swift the most. She's become so big, so famous, that she is a literal threat to the Republican Party's power. But let's be honest. She's just a human being. She's not all powerful, nor do I think she has the power to single-handedly change the outcome of elections. But let's keep it real. Conservatives don't like her specifically because she's a liberal. If she told everyone to vote for Donald Trump, they would love her. And all of this, you know, concern trolling about people worshiping celebrities would go out the window if she tells them what they want to hear. But to be fair, I think liberals would probably have the same response to her if she were conservative that Republicans have to her now because we do live in a highly polarized political climate. But we know that conservatives would love her if she were conservative because their criticisms of her are so incredibly ironic. And you'll see what I mean when you watch this next clip by Greg Kelly of Newsmax. They're elevating her to an idol, idolatry. This is a little bit what idolatry, I think, looks like, and you're not supposed to do that. In fact, if you look it up in the Bible, it's a sin. So I don't like that. Idolatry is a sin, according to Trump supporter Greg Kelly of Newsmax, the Trump supporting network, if not the Trump supporting news network. I mean, the irony just went right over his head, but he goes on to conspiratorialize about the potential PSYOP campaign that she's allegedly involved with to boost Biden. And look at one of the ways that he tries to make fun of her. I need to be on the right side of history. Yeah, and if he killer. doesn't win, then at least I, I at least I tried. So um, that is literally what Trump does all the time. There are memes about his weird hand gestures, but all of a sudden weird hand gestures bothers Greg Kelly. I mean, what a hack. But on the subject of Donald Trump, he's also pissed off about Taylor Swift, albeit for a completely different reason. Rolling Stone reports, behind the scenes, Trump has reacted to the possibility of Biden and Swift teaming up against him this year, not with alarm, but with an instant projection of ego. In recent weeks, the former president has told people in his orbit that no amount of A-list celebrity endorsements will save Biden. Trump has also privately claimed that he is more popular than Swift and that he has more committed fans than she does, a person close to Trump and another source with knowledge of the matter tell Rolling Stone. Last month, the source close to Trump adds, the ex-president commented to some confidants that it obviously made no sense that he was not named Time Magazine's 2023 Person of the Year, an honor that went to none other than Swift in December. In other words, he's jealous of her. Now, I love the claim that his fans are more committed than hers because it's probably true since they literally did an insurrection for him, and I doubt that they would do that for her. But he can't deny that even though his fans might be more committed, her fans are way more intelligent, despite the fact that most of them are probably 12 years old on average. But one last thing that I do want to show you is a clip from OAN. And this host is going to use the Taylor Swift hysteria to concoct a new conspiracy theory about all sports, though. So they're broadening it out, but let's watch. America's pop star celebrity sweetheart joins forces with the top dog in the NFL, playing for the team that's going to the Super Bowl. I mean, let's be real here. This is bread and circuses on steroids. Major League Sports in and of itself is nothing but a psyop. Get kids plugged into the cycle of going to public indoctrination camps, playing sports for their school, and going to games. So then they become obsessed with some grown man who gets paid millions of dollars every year to throw a ball around while promoting poison death shots and child slave labor through various brand deals and endorsements. So sad. Imagine being so brainwashed by sports you actually show up to your team stadium to shovel snow for free so you can watch a bunch of grown men who are overpaid tackle each other. <laughs> Seriously though, trudging through three feet of snow amid a massive blizzard just to watch a game? Yeah, sorry, you couldn't pay me to do that. 
Just imagine for a moment if people were as dedicated to Jesus as they are professional sports. Listen, as somebody who is also not into sports, I would much rather prefer them be dedicated to sports than Jesus. I think that'd be a lot less harmful for society overall. But it's just so interesting to me that she thinks sports is a psyop, but somehow religion isn't. I just don't get the way that their brains work. Furthermore, imagine shitting on people simply finding happiness. I mean, like her, I don't get sports, but I'm also into things that people don't get, like video games. But whatever leads us to happiness or find some enjoyment out of our short time on Earth, I think that's that's good. Why shit on people because they enjoy doing something? I just don't understand that, but it really speaks to a growing trend with conservatives. They're not only becoming more detached from reality, they're also getting more detached from the rest of the country because while they conspiracy monger about Taylor Swift and the NFL, normal Americans seem to be enjoying the NFL just fine. Mediaite reports that this was the most watched AFC championship ever with a peak viewership of 64 million people. So they've just become so detached from the rest of the country which I think is a logical consequence of them becoming detached from reality, but it's one of the many reasons why they are struggling to find a message that resonates with normal Americans. They've just become too insulated and too tribalistic and overly conspiratorial, and they're just miserable fucking people, and that's why they're unable to win over Americans. But I mean, as desperate as they are to obtain power, I can guarantee relentlessly attacking and conspiracy mongering about one of the biggest pop stars in the world during an election year is not gonna help their cause. I'm gay. 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 Gays. Gays. Mom. I'm transgender. Gender. 